Brought to you by Crunchyroll, where you can watch Ruby and Saint Seiya for free online. Hey guys, I know I promised you Sun Wukong in the last episode, but I realized that his bracer build uses a bending form for the majority of the heat forming. And I didn't want that to be people's first exposure to PVC armor when bending forms aren't really the case in like 99% of the situations. Uh, I've only used a bending form on Sun and Yang, but the majority of my armor is done just freehand bending. Uh, so in order to showcase this, I wanted to show you guys my current project, which is Saint Seiya. His bracer is more indicative of how I do the majority of my armor, and then after that, we'll get back to Sun, I, I promise. So let's get started and learn how to armor. Alright, the first thing I like to do is I like to grab all of my material and my tools. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our PVC foam. You can find this online, it's called Sintra, or PVC foam, you can find that too. You can find it on Amazon, I link my source in my blog from sdplastics.com. Next thing you're going to need is just some sort of writing tool, so I like to use a pencil. The next thing you're going to need is going to you're going to need some sort of knife. Uh, I use a box cutter uh, with a, just a standard blade here. Uh, some people like to use the uh, the breakaway blade. Some people like these exacto knives. Uh, it, in the end, it doesn't really matter. I just prefer box cutters. And let's be real, the the red ones cut faster. Um, the next thing I'm really adamant about is uh, super glue, and I really like the Loctite super glue, the professional liquid. Um, this stuff is just really great. I swear to you, this isn't some sort of infomercial, but I've I've used the Gorilla super glue, the the crazy super glue. I've used a lot of different super glues, and they they the Loctite just blows them all away. So I, I just spend the extra dollar and have a little less armor drama. The next thing we're gonna need is we're just gonna get our heat gun. Uh, this guy's pretty beat up, but I mean, uh, you can get this at Harbor Freight for I think like $20, and then on top of that you can get a 20% off coupon. So I mean, it it we're not getting the latest and greatest because all you need is a, is a contraption to shoot heat at stuff, so you don't need anything fancy. So what I've done is I've already drawn all of my patterns onto the PVC. And so now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to cut them with my knife. Uh, you'll notice that every time I cut, I'll do at least two cuts. The first one is going to be just tracing it out with a knife and kind of scoring it, making a little valley. And then the second and third and subsequent cuts are going to be the ones that I'm actually trying to uh, get rid of the material. Uh, your, those first cuts are really integral because that's what's going to make it accurate. The next cuts are the ones that's going to finish it off. So that first one, just cut a little score on it, and that's going to be your little line that you're going to follow, and you're going to be in good shape. So let's fast forward a bit. All right, so now I'm cutting out one of the pieces that's going to be a support for one of the... I don't even know what to call it. In any case, what you need to know is that one side absolutely needs to be straight. So I'm going to take my yardstick here, you can use a ruler or whatever, and you're just going to ride your blade on the side of it to get that nice straight line. Uh, again, we're just going to make, we're going to score it a little bit, not going to really go too crazy. And once you get that nice groove in, you can remove the yardstick or ruler, and then you can just go in and finish off the cut. And then, voila, you have a perfectly straight cut. And now, and you'll see later down the line why we really need that straight cut. So, let's fast forward a bit more. Alright, so let's grab our first piece. Uh, I, drew a, I drew a line down the middle to show that's the center line. Uh, we'll need that later. Uh, right now, what I'm doing is I'm heating it all around. I left it outside, it's kind of cold. So I, I just want everything to be a kind of an even temperature. So well, we're gonna do that real quick. All right, so now that I've heated it and got it a nice uniform temperature, roughly, I'm gonna heat down the middle, down that center line. And what I like to do is I just like to heat down there and then I, I'm gonna bend around it. So I, I bend right down that center line, kind of like I'm folding a piece of paper, uh, kind of knead it around the edges so that it it gets nice and uniform. You get that uniform curve. And the thing is, I've seen a lot of people teach that you heat the entire thing 
and then you slap it on your arm to get the same curvature as your arm. Or you heat the entire thing and slap it on your leg, get the same curvature as your leg. Uh, that's really not the case in 99% of stuff. Uh, your, your arms and legs aren't perfectly symmetrical, so if you slap it on there, you're gonna get some weird, crappy sort of result. And maybe I just don't know how to do it, but I mean, I, I've never gotten a really great result doing that. So I like to do this more, this slow and steady sort of thing. So I heat down the middle and then I form a little bit and then I'll heat a little bit uh, around the middle and then I'll, I'll form from there. And it's, I'm kind of doing, kind of pushing my thumbs into it, kind of pushing in and then pulling out. So now I'm heating it a little bit more, giving it a little chop thing. Uh, I, I kind of don't have any names for any of the techniques I use. But now I got a nice curve, and then it kind of fits on my arm pretty nice. It, I don't really want it to be form-fitting, so I, I'm just not going to make it form-fitting. Uh, so now that it, it fits satisfactorily on my arm, I'm going to go out and get, I'm going to do the next step, which is going to be making the little spine things. All right, so let's get started. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one of the, uh, sp the bases for one of the spines. And I'm going to very carefully have my hand underneath the PVC foam. Uh, PVC foam makes a for a decent insulator, so my hand isn't really getting scorched. So if you if you just hide your your little your tootsies behind it, uh, you won't you won't burn yourself. Uh, no promises though. Uh, so I heat it up, and then I'm just going to put it on my my bracer there. I want ever I want it to lay on there at the same curvature. So I'm kind of using a bending form sort of. Uh, tactic here to get make sure that the plate is the same curvature as the bracer so we're gonna heat do a couple more passes make sure that it, it's the same curve along the entire body of the plate so we're gonna keep doing that all right so let's check up on how we're doing here uh, I already have both of the, the side little spine things heated up and they're kind of nicely curved. We got the right curvature. Let's do a little test here. Make sure that they're they're gonna sit right. All right, so we're looking pretty good. So let's move on to the next step. All right, so let's move on to the next step. Uh, I'm gonna take my plate here, and then I'm gonna glue this uh, this sort of like support thing to it, and I'm just gonna glue them perpendicular to each other. Uh, this foam is only three millimeters thick. And by virtue of the super glue just being incredibly resilient, uh, it's gonna stick there pretty damn well. So let's, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna apply it a little bit to the tip, and then once that part gets adhered, then I can apply it to the rest. So I'm gonna lay it down. So I'm just applying a little pressure to it. Um, sorry, I got it a little off camera. Uh, I, I kind of messed up, but I'm just applying pressure to it so that the glue sets a little quicker. Uh, once I get it to set, then I apply glue to the other end. And then once that end is uh, set, then the entire thing is just stuck on there for essentially forever. So here we go. The whole thing is nice and set, real nice. And so we're gonna move on. All right, so I'm gonna do this last one here, the last uh, spine. Uh, recorded it a little bit better. Uh, apply a little bit of glue to one end, and then just lay it down. You only have to wait a couple seconds for this stuff to set. It's like five seconds, maybe. And so once that, once one side sets, then I pick it up, and then I'll put it. I'll put a little bit more glue on the other end. And then apply a little bit of pressure, wait like a few seconds, and then things are nice and set. So uh, I'll work on the next videos trying to stay a little bit more on camera, but it's a learning experience for everyone. Alright, so that is the whole build as of right now. We're going to add some trim and whatever the hell. Uh, but here's one where I taped together so that you can see that how it looks. Uh, I'm going to be adding a bit of clay a little bit of epo epoxy sculpt, some bondo, whatever, and that, that'll be the finished bracer. It's a good start for a base. It's obviously not done, but I hope that this sort of 
a more general technique will help you guys out and then we'll be coming out with sun here shortly all right so like the video subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys next time